Yo! It's time for the Honda of Time. I bought it from these guys, Advanced Ignition. They get really good reviews, they know what they're doing. They, they totally rebuilt this and they put Honda in it and they put a base map in it. I just told them all of the stuff that I have. It should run well enough for me to test drive it and kind of break it in a little bit until I can get it to a tuner and get it tuned. They wired it for an electronic boost controller. You gotta put some resistors and capacitors and stuff in the, in the board. The one thing I didn't tell them though was that I was gonna put an Innovate Wideband in it. So they probably could have wired it for that and programmed the base map for that too, but I left that out for some reason. So I gotta dig into this thing and I gotta cut a couple of resistors out of it. I really don't want to do this. I don't know that much about programming. In fact, I don't know anything about programming. There's two resistors in here somewhere I gotta cut out. Yeah, when these guys rebuild them, they put all new capacitors in them. And like, Han data, of course. And, um, there's some stuff they soldered in here for my electronic boost controller. A couple of resistors and stuff. Looks like they do really nice work. There's a couple of resistors I need to cut out so this wideband can have a clean signal. They say R136 and R138. It should be these two green resistors and this brown one I want to leave in here. That's 137. I got a little cutters here. Take those out and save them for a rainy day. That should be all I need to do to this. I can put the cover back on it. I looked on the Honda website for pin D10. That's the one I'm going to need for my wide band. It should be the fifth one in on the bottom on this connector. I got some painter's tape. I marked this D10 wide band. I'm just going to put some painter's tape on here and that way I'll know where that one goes. Then my electronic boost controller is A11. So this is the A connector and I want the sixth one over. So that should be this one right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll mark that with my fancy painter's tape A11 boost control. I got a connector I found in an Accord. Um, this is just for a cooling fan switch. Intake air temperature, coolant fan switch, there's a fan power, I think, down by the fans that are the same, and I think the knock sensor is the same connector, too. That aftermarket connector, though, I plugged it in. It plugs in all the way, but it doesn't clip down, probably because I bought a cheap aftermarket air temp sender. So, instead of cutting wires, I'm going to de-pin this. It should work. I just got to figure out how to pop this plastic out of here. There it goes. Looks like I can just pull this little piece of plastic back right here. I think these just pull right out. Probably got to get this waterproofing off of here. Cracked up a little bit. Try that again. Looks like my wire's gonna be a little short, but I can I can get some length out of this. 
Oh, this one don't want to come apart like the other one did. There it goes. I'm going to have to try to use a little T-pin for this. These connectors are a little different. The same on the back, but they got little tabs on them. I'm just going to bend them over. These little waterproofings. I guess I'll have to get those out of the way too. I got them. Cool. I want this waterproofing, so all I'm going to do is just make a couple slices to get the wire out of here without cutting myself open. That should still work really good. I'm just a little bit short on the wire. I can put a little dab of ultra gray on it just to kind of hold it in there. I also put a check valve in my PCV valve I got from some turbocharged German car. Zip tied it down with a new hose. This way this, this old line it won't blow out and um, when it takes in vacuum and it sucks this check valve will open and a PCV valve will work and when it builds boost pressure it'll close. Your PCV valve is supposed to too but once in a while they leak just a little bit. So this is going to ensure that I'm not getting any boost pressure in my crankcase running my PCV valve. I'm going to get access to my computer now and I think I'm going to take the glove box out too because i got to do some wiring and I need to jump the relay for the fuel pump and I need to drain all the fuel out of the tank. Okay. I need this. I got the double O-ring thing going on. The one on the top is the original. I already did a video on how to make this work. That goes in there real nice. There, I got all four of them in. These should be conical too, meaning that they have a round spray pattern, so it shouldn't matter what direction I have these pointed. Yeah, that's not fair. These are supposed to fit. These are OBD1 connectors. That's what they're listed as. So they're probably for an older Honda. They look like a GM connector. I'm going to make my own. I'm going to take these apart too. Oh, these aren't the same. Damn it, man. Well, I don't like doing this, but I'm going to do it anyways. I could just stab them in there and put liquid tape all over everything so it's nice and waterproof. I would rather do it on this connector, though. This connector that don't want to work. Oh my gosh, those things are in there really nice, too. I'm doing it. If I ever got to take these out, either I'll just yank them out or I'll cut the wires. Yeah, after it dries, I'll probably need to put another coat on. We'll see. That's super waterproof, though. It's super cheesy. 
but there won't be any water getting in there. I got a Speed Factory 4 bar map sensor I'm going to put in this. I didn't get cheap on the map sensor. I wanted a good quality map. Very, very important. And it's red, so it matches. I wish it was redder. Now let this stuff dry overnight. Looks pretty good. There's some holes in some of them I'm just going to kind of fill up. I mean, it's all waterproofed and everything, but I'm going to fill them anyways. Put a little more on there. Gob a little more on. A little more on. I just called it a little more on. I'm going to get this fuel line off next. So I can drain what's left in the tank. This thing's been on E for a long time, so I get to see how much gas is in this tank still. The gas light's been whipping on and off ever since I built this thing. I can't make up its mind whether it has gas in it or not. That's how I'm dealing with that jazz. I wired a Walbro fuel pump in this in a previous video. And I put a relay in it. Really all I got to do is jump these two white wires somehow. And uh, the pump should fire up. I taped these wires up pretty good. Try to get in here with one of these. Alligator. Oh shit. Well, I found the hot wire. That was like too cool for me. Oh yeah, I'm finding it. I'll just watch that thing fill up. Amazingly enough, it's pumping a lot of air right away, so this tank's pretty much totally empty. I don't even think there's a gallon in this tank. Before I go wiring in my new ECU, I'm going to make sure this Mac Boost controller works. Bear with me here. Um, what I did was the out. On the boost controller that's supposed to go to the wastegate, I just hooked up to an old piece of crap fuel pressure tester. And um, the input, I hooked up to a, a pressure gauge that's hooked up to my air compressor. And I can turn this up to like, I don't know, probably 10 pounds. I don't want to go over 10 pounds because this only goes to 10 pounds so actually I want to keep it under 10 I'll put it at like I don't know probably 8 and it's obviously holding pressure it's not leaking which is important I don't hear any air coming out of it I could have hooked a graphing meter up to it too to make sure it's got a good square wave signal but I don't I don't think I need to do that I just I hooked up a fuel fuel injection tester I figured that'd work pretty good. And then I can I can set the mode on this. Like uh I can do a short pulse. And I should be able to hear the boost controller go off and this gauge should start going crazy. So yeah, that's telling me it's working. Because it's sending pressure in here, and, and, and this vent closes, sends pressure in it, and when it opens, this vents. And then I can, I can set the mode. Got to reset it here. I can set the mode to continuous, and then pulse it. And this thing should be... Um, open and closing and um, it's shit it's not doing a damn thing oh now it's bleeding all the pressure out that's why okay there 
it's working. Let's set it to a long pulse. No, it's not doing anything. Huh, that's strange. I set it to a short pulse. And it works. I set it to a medium pulse. Oh, there it goes. That thing was stuck because it didn't work. No, it's not working. Set it to a long pulse and it don't do work. Set it to a medium pulse. And it don't work again. Oh, there it goes. There's something up with this. I'm going to get a different boost controller. It's got a little delay too. I hit the button. Something's goofy with this con this boost controller. I don't like it at all. Oh, yep. I set it on four. It don't do anything. It's not working now. <laughs> this thing's a piece of shit. I don't know if this uh, boost controller was up to the challenge of uh, my fuel injection tester or what, but I took it apart. Some people are saying that people make a lot of Chinese knockoffs of these. I can't imagine that anybody would because they're only $20, $25 anyways. Why would somebody make a Mac Chinese knockoff of this? It doesn't make any sense, but some people are saying a lot of these are fakes. I don't know whether to believe that or not. I'm pretty sure this is a Mac Boost controller, but there's no waterproofing in here. And um, it's probably just a cheap piece of crap. I don't, I don't know. Um, I tried to ohm out this coil, 26.6, so it should be okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't like it regardless because it's not waterproof. So I got some high temperature one from a tuner that claims they're really good. Um, it's a lot better than this one. It's waterproof and high temp. So I'm just going to junk this thing. Whether or not it's a fake, I don't know. But it looks like a piece of crap to me. I mean, I had to drill out these holes and everything. I don't know. Just more cheap eBay junk. I just did some lazy wiring for my wide band and my boost controller. I already disconnected the negative battery terminal. Looks like these are only held in by one screw. I better save this too for just in case stuff. Those should be nice connections. Well, I just got to figure out how to hide all this stuff up under this panel. Yes, yes, how about that? Gee, I don't know. 
I don't know, what do I do? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. That's what I'm gonna do. It's tucked away now. And uh, maybe I'll cut a little slot in the in the cover for this this cable. Make it stick out. Well I put five gallons of E85 in it. <laughs> It's actually a winter blend for Minnesota, so it's probably like E51, which is 100 octane. Let's see if this um, base map's going to work for this thing, and uh, hopefully it will run. Oh my god, it's running. This thing's running really rich, 10 to 1. I put this cover back on it, so it kind of looks Honda-ish still. And um, yeah, I just looked around and... The only real leak I've found since I built this was right here. This AM line, this drain line for my turbo, that was leaking, but I just loosened it up and tightened it about four or five times because it'll move this around and and reseat this taper in here. And it, it seems to be not leaking now. Everything else looks really clean in here. I mean, I, I took it for one good pull when it was snowy out. I don't want to drive it in the salt though. I don't want to get this all salted up. So when I drove it, there was fresh snow on it. So I didn't get any salt dripping on it, thankfully. But um, everything seems really nice. I used a step drill and drilled a little hole in my kick panel for my data wire for Han data. And that plug was actually in the firewall. On the other side um, put a fire extinguisher in it if you do a build like this and you don't put a fire extinguisher in your car you're an idiot other than that oh yeah I got one good question too I bought these rims a couple of years ago somebody painted these and, and it's like it's like really flaky chippy Somebody can chime in and tell me what the hell kind of flaky, chippy paint is this? I mean, it's just, I don't know, they kind of looked okay when I first bought it. It looks like something that kind of got baked on or something. It's just all coming apart really bad. See, look at that. Um, I don't know what the heck this stuff is. I don't know what kind of paint it is. I was touching it up with fingernail polish and stuff for a little while, but now it's so bad I'm just I'm just leaving it. I don't know. Maybe I'll plasta dip them white or something. I haven't made up my mind yet. I kind of like the rims. I got another set of rims too, really nice rims, but I just I don't know. I don't know if I want to use them or not. He's got really nice tires on them. I kind of want to burn them up. Actually, already burned them up pretty good already. Nice cheap tires. So yeah, as far as this build goes, I think I'm done for a while. I'm not. I'm not going to mess with it for another couple of months. I'm probably going to just do some programming to it and try to try to get the wide band to jive with the with with Han data make sure that all them readings are the same and other than that I'm I'm not going to do anything till the snow melts until spring I got to drive it about 500 miles just to make sure everything's cool before I can call the tuner and get it dynoed I don't want to call them yet I want to drive it around first and make sure everything's going to be okay I mean, you make an appointment with those guys too. They're they're really popular. It takes a long time to get in. So I I don't know when I'm going to get this thing dynoed. I guess we'll have to see. I'm done for now though.
Time for me to stop messing with this car and get back to work. Well, here's all the parts I have left over. I got this EMUSA intercooler. Um, I bought a couple of PCV valves. I got one that's for a stock Honda and it, it kind of leaked when you put pressure in it the opposite way and you want them totally sealed. So I got one for a WRX and it did the same thing and then I found out these are like, these are cheaper than my factory one. So I'm just using the stock one. Um, I got a wastegate that I was going to use for this header that I'm not going to use. Uh, I was going to use an exhaust scavenge system on it, but then I decided against it because my motor's so fresh and tight, I don't think I'm going to need it. I, I got a vacuum gauge for it too, so I could make sure it's not building too much pressure and the vacuum's always working on it. So I'm not going to use any of that either. And, um... I got I got two and a quarter intercooler pipe. I bought a kit for that because I was going to do do all of this on my hot side, and I ended up just using a couple of pieces. So I got a lot of two and a quarter pipe left, and I got some two inch pipe from the stock system, and um, a couple of these leftover things from my turbo kit, and uh, manual boost controller and. Just some little pieces and odds and ends from mostly from that turbo kit. Little extra stuff. And that's all my leftovers. And it's all for sale. Okay, bye.